Hey everybody, welcome back. In my last video, I talked about the extern keyword in C, which causes a lot of confusion for students and maybe for non-students. Today, I wanna to talk about another keyword that gives probably just as much trouble, if not more. In C, the static keyword gives people trouble for a couple of reasons. The first is that it seems to do different things depending on where it's used. The second is that if you're used to a language like Java, where you have static members in classes, the meaning is very different. And the third is that static in C is only loosely connected to what static actually means in English. In English, static means fixed, unchanging, stable, or steady. In a Java class, static means that a member of that class is associated with the type, not an instance of the type. And in C, well, it means something else. In C, you can make a global variable static, you can make a function static, or you can make a local variable static. We don't have classes, so you can't make class members static, but anyway, this isn't Java. Regardless of what it is you're declaring as static, in C, using static affects the scoping of the variable. It affects how it exists and where it will be visible. Making a global variable or a function static just means that that variable or function is only visible within its own translation unit. So I recently did a video on extern, which allows you to specify that a variable is defined in one translation unit and used in another translation unit. Well, in this case, this is sort of the opposite. This is a way of defining a variable in a translation unit and saying this is private or hidden within the translation unit. Why we couldn't use private or something like that, I don't know. We call it static, but that's what it means. When used with a local variable, things get a little bit weird. With locals, a, a static local is persistent, like a global, meaning that it will persist over multiple function calls. So you can call this function over and over again and this variable sticks around. It doesn't get erased, it doesn't get reinitialized, it sticks around. So in that way, maybe it is static, it's unchanging, it, it stays there throughout the program. Like global variables and functions, making a local variable static means that that variable is only visible within that function. So it's kind of like a global variable that nobody can see outside of that function. And while things are getting weird, you can also have the same name as another global variable. And so now in this example, now counter means two different things inside and outside of the function. And by the way, this is something that I would probably never recommend. It just happens to work and I wanted to point out that it actually works. But basically what you're doing when you say it's static is you're basically saying this thing just exists within this little function and nobody outside is even aware that it exists. So again, why should we use static? I can think of two common cases that I see all the time. The first is you have a variable that needs to be persistent. It needs to save state across function calls from one function call to another but it's only used by one function. And so there's no need for any other function to even know it exists. And so in this case, a static local variable can be very useful is it basically allows you to declare this thing and it, it means that no other function is going to accidentally mess around with your variable unless it corrupts memory, overflows buffers, or does something else really nasty that's more a product of the fact that C is not type safe. The second reason I like static is it allows you to try to make more modular code in C. Now C is not really known as the best language for making modular code. You'd probably wanna to stick to an object-oriented programming language for that, but you can make things more modular. And one of the ways you can do it is using static global variables and static functions. And so basically what this means, for example, is so if I'm making a module that I'm going to give to you and you're gonna do something with it, you're gonna call it, I can have a function called is valid in my code and you can have a function called is valid in your code. And as long as we made them static, they're not gonna conflict. The compiler's not gonna care. They're two different functions as though they were given two different names and we can use them and we can each use them independently. And that's really handy when I'm going to give you code and I don't wanna have to worry about making sure that all of my identifiers are 100% unique. The downside is that there's a possibility that people reading your code might get confused. They might see two functions with the same name. They might be confused which one is actually being called when, but this is a problem anytime you have any modular program system. This is true. This is a risk you run in Java or any object-oriented programming language. And so I think it's a risk that's worth taking. It's pretty easy for other programmers to avoid this confusion. So that's all I have for you today, folks. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of C's static keyword, what it means, how it's used, and how you could use it in your next project. Happy coding, and until next time, I'll see you later.